G'day guys, how you doing? Steve here from WA Gravity Enduro. Just testing out a new live stream feature here at the Center of Gravity HQ, uh, otherwise known as my study in my house uh, during this crazy time of uh, COVID-19. I hope you're all doing really well out there and staying safe and uh, taking care of each other and the family and you're yeah, getting a little bit of R&R &R as well during this time, which is, uh, which is always very nice. Um, I just wanted to touch base with you all, do a live feed just to make sure, just to hopefully I can see some comments come through very shortly. So if you've got any questions with some of the content that I'll be bringing you shortly, um, hopefully I can reply in real time, um, which I can see some uh, little question marks there from Double Black Mountain Bike Apparels and Jaden with a you. So thanks, Jaden. So uh, keep the comments coming, guys. Um, I'm just going to recap on where we are. Uh, with the season of 2020 and uh, hopefully give you a little bit more information going forward as well for the series ahead and uh, sort of what we've got planned. Hope it all sort of makes sense, but I'll get into it in a little bit more detail. G'day, Ash. Um, all right, so what we'll do is we'll just do a little bit of a recap on our videos uh, that kicked off the year. Obviously, we started off with round one at the Pines and uh, round two at Dunsborough. It was a pretty awesome weekend, uh, the double header there. And uh, yeah, it was, a, it was an absolute blast. It was a lot of work, um, you know, for the wage crew as well, getting packed, set up on one day, packed up and getting set up on the next day. But I think it went pretty smoothly and uh, I had a whole heap of fun. It was great to see everyone out there and having a bit of a blast. Um, obviously for some guys, it's gonna be, um, uh, you know, Anyway, I'll just get to it. I'll just get to the videos and uh, let's have a bit of a recap on, on how we did uh, on rounds one and two. Welcome everybody to WA Gravity Enduro 2020 round one here at the Pines in Margaret River. <laughs> Woo! You're on. Good luck guys! You. So that was a pretty awesome uh, round there, round one kicking off the season at the Pines. A um, little bit dry, a little bit dusty, a little bit loose, but um, yeah, I mean, one of the biggest turnouts we've ever seen. We had over 500 registrations there for round one. It was an awesome way to kick off the weekend. And um, yeah, so many whippets as well, which is great to see for the, the sport and the future and, and good things to come. So. Really looking forward to seeing those whippets and those younger groups grow. We also introduced the under nine whippets as well. And uh, yeah, had a great turnout with the under nines too. Uh, so let's get on to round two. We backed that up obviously straight away the second day at Dunsborough. And thanks again to all our sponsors and supporters for picking up shop down in uh, uh, the Pines and uh, mobilizing up to here. I think it worked out very well. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. Round two of the WA Gravity Enduro Series 2020. We are backing up round two with round one yesterday at the Pines. That is really about it for me, guys. Get up there, stay safe, look after each other, and uh, get out there and enjoy. Right, good luck, guys. Woo. So that was the double header weekend, rounds one and two at the Pines and Dunsborough. Uh, it was a great way to kick off the season and uh, we had an absolute hoot. 
Uh, and then we were getting ready for round three at York. Uh, obviously, uh, COVID-19 uh, played a pretty big role in uh, worldwide on events, events worldwide, as well as our local events here in Western Australia. And uh, we had to put a pretty quick uh, break or hiatus on the whole season, unfortunately. Um, so we've uh, been basically sitting on our hands for a little while now, uh, just seeing how things panned out. Um, and uh, now we've had a little bit of time, a little bit of breathing room. Obviously, I've, um, I've sort of my job's been made uh, put on hold as well, so it's given me uh, some very, very good family time and given me a little bit of uh, opportunity to try and reshape uh, the 2020 season uh, once again. So it's sort of going to be uh, 2020 version two, uh, dubbed post Corona or post uh, COVID, post Rona. So uh, I'll get to the, the well, our schedule on what we've got planned uh, very shortly. Um, but yeah, obviously um, COVID-19 has, has uh, made a massive impact around the world. Uh, very fortunately in Western Australia, um, I think for the last couple of days, uh, we haven't seen any increase in uh, infection rates. So that's very promising and uh, very, very great. It's, it's excellent. So uh, well done to all you guys out there as well for obviously staying home. and. Um, flattening the curve, reducing the spread and all that sort of thing. So um, yeah, fingers crossed that you know, this, um, we'll start to see a few restrictions um, you know, being stopped very soon. We've also already seen the, the alcohol restriction um, being lifted, so I'm sure a few of you are very happy about that. Um, but obviously as we look ahead to the end of the year, uh, where a lot of the events, not just our events, but you know, events around the world and events locally, not just mountain biking, but all other events will try and shift what they had at the start of the year to the tail end of the year. So unfortunately, we, we need to do the same thing. So um, we're planning to kick off the season on July 12th, which was our rescheduled York round. Uh, so fingers crossed we can still get that one underway. Um, if not, unfortunately, we'll just have to keep dropping the events off um, as the year progresses. Um, depending again on how the government uh, restrictions are lifted uh, or not. So um, uh, what I'll do very quickly is I'll just go back to those results uh, following rounds one and rounds two. It was pretty cool to see some of the, um, the local guys right at the top, especially for the men full enduro, uh, Jaden Fraser, uh, Rolly Kime and Jordan Prochara, you know, top three great riders. Um, and it's gonna be a great, uh, Great watching these guys battle it out uh, throughout the year. Um, Jaden's obviously just stepped up from the under 19s as well into the full enduro 19 plus, and uh, we've got a few, quite a few um, guys in this full enduro 19 plus, which is sort of the redubbed elite groups now. Uh, heaps of competitors in there, which is great to see, and uh, it's going to be very exciting to watch that play out. Then we've got this uh, new category we introduced, which was the men 19 to 29 weapons. Uh, we originally had the 19 to 39, so we've split that back up because we had so many sort of sport riders in there and dropped the expert just to try and um, create a little bit of clarity in those sorts of um, in that sort of field. Uh, great to see Austin Ridley from Empire Cycles up there for the 19 to 29. As we go down the list, 30 to 39, the Warriors, Jake McDonald. We'll just keep panning down a little bit very quickly. So these are the uh, overall series standings. Uh, Paul Wilkinson, Tim Bennett, and Joel Fisher, they are very, some regular enduro riders, so great to see them in the uh, 40 to 49s leading the charge at the moment. Then uh, we've got the Ian Daniel, Steve Lane, and Greg Hoff, the Hofster, uh, um, in the 50 to 59s. Uh, men 60 plus, Graham Dixon and Clem Ryan, um, the heavyweights up there, always uh, having a blast and uh, very great sportsmanship with those gents. Then we've got to the men e-bike 19 plus. Now we've um, introduced some new rules regarding e-bikes, uh, which is uh, on the website. So you'll be able to see the Enduro Electric webpage there with a lot more information on um, information about you know uh, bike wattage and rules and things like that. We've also started a new um, uh, web uh, Facebook page. If you look for Watt Surfer, W-A-T-T -T Surfer, uh, we've got a bit more information on there as well, and we really want to um, create the discussion around e-bikes and uh, where that will take us in the future. Then we've got the men under 13 whippets. Huge whip turnout for the whippets, which is great to see as well. Um, two very suitable courses for them, which was the Pines and Dunsborough, so it was great to see so many whippets out there. 
Then we have uh, the under 15s. Um, they, you know, these guys are coming up from a lot from the under 13s as well, and uh, it's going to be great to see them charge ahead um, in the years to come. And uh, very excited to see those guys as well. A lot of those guys, uh, you know, heading over east for mountain bike Australia races as well. And um, so, yeah, very cool to see some of those guys up in the men under 15s coming through now. A lot of under 15s. <laughs> Under 17s as well, Tom Rubery, Bailey Christie, Sam Goldstone, um, Nicholas Regan, Gus Kime, Joel Irving, and uh, William Yenny. I mean, these are some, some top riders in through here, especially in the top 10. And they've been around for a couple of years now. And it's, um, yeah, great to see them right at the top of the leaderboard there. Scrolling down quickly to the men under 19s, Corbin Winant, Harry Ainsworth, and Joel Cook. I think some of these guys have been heading east for uh, to Derby and some other awesome races over there. Uh, they've just returned and then we introduced the men under under nines. Um, great to see quite a few, 15 competitors in there as well. Uh, then the women full enduro 19 plus, which is the elites. Uh, Storm Green, Claire Garcia Webb and Catherine Young. Um, very close points up there already. Uh, then on, on to the... Now we um, arranged the categories a little bit for the women as well to just try and keep it competitive and exciting and to try and align ourselves a little bit more with the uh, Enduro World Series classes too. Emily Mountford, um, who I hope to chat with her a little bit later on uh, regarding the WA Gravity Girls Instagram page that I've seen pop up. Um, that's awesome to see. Um, some ladies um, steaming ahead and um, you know taking or hope, trying to promote a lot more women in mountain biking and enduro, which is great. Uh, then we head on down to uh, Jennifer Gruending for the women 35 to 44. A few women in there, which is great. 45 plus was the new category as well. Rebecca Steele, Natalie Jenkinson, and Simone Nichols. And uh, just finishing out a few things here with the women under 13: Bella Moore, Haley Poet, Sage Dingy. Under 15s women as well, Megan Smith, Chelsea Sobic, uh, Alyssa Holland, women under 17. We expect certainly some more women to come in um, later on in the events in the year as well. Uh, Sophie Taylor, under 17s, Lucy Hill for the under 19s and the under 9 whip, Whippets women. Jessica Wardle, uh, obviously the daughter of uh, rock and roll mountain biking, uh, Jen and Mark. Uh, Macy Johnson, Emily uh, Taylor, and rounding out things is there is Lily Kinney. So that was a quick look at just the uh, the tally there for how the points are shaping up over after those two rounds, rounds one and rounds two. Um, so obviously we've got a big season still planned ahead, and uh, the only uh, thing that we've unfortunately lost is round seven, which we had planned. Uh, sorry, not round seven, but we had a round planned in Karatha. And uh, due to just the um, logistics, getting there and getting things set up and, and travels and things like that, uh, we decided to uh, drop that round for this year and um, and definitely look at it on the calendar for 2021. So we're really looking forward to getting up to Karatha next year and having an enduro race up there as well. It should be very exciting. We'll definitely aim again for mid-year to um, where it's a bit cooler up there in Karatha and uh, yeah, fingers crossed all the interstate and uh, intrastate travel is lifted well by then and uh, we can get up there and, and uh, shred some of the awesome uh, trails up in Karatha as well and see some of the beautiful sunsets and, and things they've got up there. They've got an awesome mountain biking community up there and a lot of those guys come down to the southwestern race with us so we really want to get up there and support them and uh, take uh, enduro riding in Western Australia to a brand new location. So what we will do now is uh, talk a little bit more about the future ahead for 2020 for our, our plan going forward. Um, what we'll do is bring up the... Now a lot of this information is already on the website so I've been updating that uh, last night and if I bring up this page now, so this is uh, welcome to 2020 version 2. So this is post corona. Fingers crossed uh, this one will all play out very nicely. So we had nine rounds, that's been dropping to eight. We still maintain two Enduro World Series qualifiers. We've still got the four MTBA tier rounds, the state championships, and hopefully we still get over a thousand riders for the uh, individual riders for the year. But uh, again, you know, um, we're in interesting times, so we'll see how that pans out. So I've had rounds one and two. And now uh, round three, which will be, is rescheduled for the 12th of July. 
Um, if we cannot get there due to government regulations, that will unfortunately be cancelled. But fingers tightly crossed, we do get up to Mount Brown in York on July 12th. Then uh, we did have, um, well, this weekend we're actually planning on going to Linga Longa, but uh, we've scheduled that um, to finish off the 2020 series. So I'll get to that in just a moment. But round four will be on the same date uh, at the Goat Farm, which is an Enduro World Series qualifier, 1.5 times wage points, and uh, it'll be on the 9th of August. So that uh, basically remains intact, which will be very exciting. Um, Go Farm is very sort of unforgiving out there, but uh, hopefully in, in the middle of the year in August, we've seen a little bit of rain as we've seen right now, and it should soften things up and uh, get a little bit of uh, greasiness and um, greenery on the hillside out there as well. So pretty excited to get back to the goat farm. Then round five, uh, is still at Eveton Park. Uh, we have changed the date, however, which will be now on the 13th of September. So if you've already booked accommodation um, or anything like that for Eveton Park, um, that'll all automatically transfer across. And Maddie from Eveton Park will be sending out some updated information um, and updated confirmation regarding that. So the we definitely didn't want to drop Eveton Park. You guys rated it as the second best enduro location on the calendar last year, so I really keen to get back there. I've already been doing a little bit of um, um, digging and uh, fixing up some of the um, you know loose rocks and things from last year, so uh, looking forward to getting back out there again soon and just giving Eveton Park trails a little bit of TLC because we only use them once a year, so look, really looking forward to getting out there again on the 13th of September. Then we go to round six. Now I've just um, detailed this out a little bit more. We had it as just chittering, but it is definitely at Paul Neve's Three Chilies Farm. We haven't been there for quite a few years and had an absolute blast there last time. If I, if I believe right, last time we had an Enduro World Series qualifier out there as well, and it was an absolute blast. I mean, Paul and the team um, put so much work into that. We have um, timber fence crossings out there. It's very raw and, and wild and some very awesome off-camber trails out there too. Some very challenging stuff. But uh, it's a whole heap of fun out there at, uh, at Chittering and it'll be a great uh, event out there. That'll be on the 11th of October. Uh, a very challenging event as well. So uh, we do have that as 1.5 times uh, wage points and um, it is rated quite technical as well. And um, yeah, it's a pretty pretty serious push up as well. So that will be a nice challenge at Three Chilies Farm. Looking forward to that one uh, back on the calendar as well. Then round seven um, to the favourite Pemberton, heading back way down south now. And uh, we had this is still going to be the state championships. So round seven at Pemberton on the eighth of November will be the state champs. Looking forward to getting down there. A lot of hero dirt probably in November as well. Um, should be nice and, and loose and um, pretty fluffy uh, soil down there. So should be a great bit of fun. Then finally, we round out the 2020 series at Linga Longa. So if you've already entered for Linga Longa this weekend, uh, which is now being postponed to the 29th of November, all your entries will, of course, um, transfer across. If you have entered any other um, uh, events and these new dates uh, don't work out with you, uh, please feel free to email me and I'll issue a full refund. There's absolutely no problems there. We're in some pretty uh, interesting times and uh, there's a lot of rescheduling going on here. So totally understand if uh, these new dates unfortunately don't work for you. But though that uh, linger longer will be a great way to round out the 2020 series there. It's also an Enduro World Series qualifier. And um, I believe there's a new stage out there as well. We'll be uh, racing two. And it's also 1.5 times points multiplier for the wage series as well. So uh, that'd be a pretty awesome way to finish out the year. Uh, what we've just been speaking about as well was um, a queen stage. And what I'm thinking at the moment is introducing a queen stage or a Sam stage or whatever you want to call it. Uh, and it will be um, additional points, uh, series points on that specific stage. Now that specific stage uh, won't, be, um, won't be published. You guys won't know. So you won't know uh, when that queen stage or Sam stage will appear. So, uh, but you will know at the end of each round. 
So at the end of the year, they'll you know at the end of each round they'll all be tallied up. So you'll you'll um, you'll you'll see all your series points there, and hopefully it'll throw in a bit of a mix and a bit of a curveball as well. Uh, keep everyone on their toes and keep things very exciting as well. So we're looking forward to doing something a little bit special with that queen stage. G'day Adster, uh, how's everyone going out there? I've got a few guys, which is good to see. 17 comments. Sorry, I've been chatting away and I haven't even been looking at any of the comments coming through here. But I hope you're all healthy and well out there. Um, yeah, it's good to see a few guys looking at this feed at the moment. And I'm just, I've am just i got some notes up here that I'm trying to refer back to as well. So, because there's a little bit, there's quite a bit going on in this noggin and I'm just trying to um, clear it all up in my own head as well and make sure you guys are all fully informed of what's going on. So, um, so hopefully, because I know a lot of you guys, you know, got families and things like that, want to make sure that you can plan ahead and make sure that uh, things are nice and hopefully streamlined and smooth uh, for the rest of the year. Uh, fingers crossed we will get out of the uh, restrictions very soon. Again, we never know when that's going to be. It's really just based on uh, the infection rate and how, th how we're tracking, um, especially in WA, which seems to be going very, very well at the moment. So hopefully if we can keep that up, um, restrictions will be eased so sooner rather than later. All right, so I'll just bring up the overall, um, oops, sorry, that was the wrong one. Just gonna bring up the overall calendar just so you can see things there a little bit clearly. So obviously we've done rounds one and round two. Round three, July 12th, which is at York. Round four, August 9th at the Goat Farm. Round five, September 13th at Eveton Park. Round six, October 11th at Three Chilies Farm. Round seven, November 8th at Pemberton, which is also the state champs. And then uh, round eight, which is the November 29th, uh, Linga Longa final. Um, unfortunately, um, well, a lot of other locations have other events, bookings already pre-scheduled, so Unfortunately, you know, like I mentioned earlier, the, uh, we're going to have some clashes with other mountain biking rounds, unfortunately, but other, I'm sure, other events as well. So uh, this is the best that we could do. We had a few dates there which we could definitely not move. Um, so, and, and I do understand that in November it's a little bit tight with the turnaround there too, but it is the best we, we can do. We wanted to stay clear of December uh, where things get a little bit, you know, crazy with other events and work functions and all those sorts of things too. So. I believe this is the best calendar we've got going forward. Um, obviously, I like to spread it out a little bit more throughout the year, but um, it will get a little bit compressed. But fortunately, we've still got eight uh, rounds there. We'll take your best five. And of course, we've got that one and one and a half series points multipliers available for each of those rounds. Then next year, we're gonna push the Dream Team to Australia Day weekend, which will be awesome. Uh, really looking forward to that. Uh, I know Linga Longa have done a lot of work out there at the moment, so pumped to get out there um, and have our dream team event. And because we've got so much time on that weekend and leading into Australia Day, uh, we'll have quite a few other things for kids and um, family events and, and things going on as well. So really looking forward to that dream team on Australia Day um, in, at the late January 2021. And then everything will be smooth sailing, I'm sure, for uh, 2021 going ahead. There'll be no issues with any of um, coronavirus or anything returning. So it's all going to be good. All going to be good going forward. G'day, Renee. Yes, I know you guys were unfortunately traveling around the world and had to return. But um, I'm sure you guys are all healthy and happy over there on the other side of the country at the moment. Uh, enjoying some trials in Canberra and surrounds. Very nice. We'll see you guys very soon, very, very soon, I'm sure. Cool, all right. So um, the other thing that I did want to mention was um, just before our events, if we are very fortunate enough to kick off um, before July, we do want to get to linger longer for a wage training day. So we don't know... Um, when that will exactly be, but it will be before, well before uh, July. So if if for some miracle um, all the intrastate um, travel opens up and we're able to accommodate um, large events, we do want to have a wage training day to brush off the cobwebs and um, 
get you guys out there enjoying Linga longer as well um, because we have missed the round there this weekend. Uh, what we'll do is set up all the timing gear as well on um, a couple of particular stages. So I encourage all um, training providers, you know, Rock and Roll, uh, Jump and Pump Nation, um, among many others out there, which is great to see, to come and bring your teams and to do some sessioning on, on certain trails. And you'll have your wristbands on you and you'll be able to session uh, trails and, you know, adapt and try new things out and see how it impacts on your racing time. So we really want to try and get that done if, if possible in May or June. Um, again, that's just um, that's just going to be a very short notice uh, event that we'll, we'll put on. Um, it's going to be free for the wage members uh, or $10 if you're not a wage member just to utilize all the timing gear. If you are a wage member, of course, um, you get $10 off uh, shuttles as well thanks to um, Linga Longa Bike Park. So I'll just bring up that our uh, quick bit of information about our memberships here. So if you do sign up to be a wage member, you'll get 5% discounts on events. Um, there's some really great discounts in here. 15% discounts on suspension, thanks to r, &R suspension specialists. Uh, Linga Longa, so if you do become a wage member before, uh, you'll get $10 off your shuttle price, which is awesome, thanks to them. Uh, Frank Mountain Bike Apparel as well, 10% off. Uh, the Bike Stable WA, 10% off protection gear. Recovery, uh, which is the cryotherapy, which Sam Hill's used in the past. 15% off all your treatments there too. Uh, and of course, Loose Riders Perth, 10% off all purchases as well, excluding shuttle. So if you do sign up to be a wage member, there's quite a few uh, benefits there that you'll very be able to quickly recoup back. It's only $50 um, for 18 plus and $40 for under 18. And you pretty well see all those benefits straight away. So I really thank uh, those these businesses out there that are supporting the, the wage membership as well. And if you do want to jump on board, feel free um, to contact us. But I think that is pretty well enough talking from me. Um, thanks, Emily, for the tip on the training day. Yeah, we're really looking forward. I know some guys are going to be, you know, we've had quite a big hiatus between uh, not just racing, but it'll be just generally mountain biking as well. So if we can get to an awesome location like Linga Longa and get a little bit of practice in, uh, and you know, just shuttles galore and a bit of practice, and especially with the t having the timing gear out, uh, you guys will be able to session certain sections of trail as well because we'll have interim timing gates. So you can go up, go up the hill, um, maybe test some different lines or different techniques, riding styles, get back down to the bottom, download your data and uh, see how your times compare, which I think would be really useful for a lot of guys out there trying to progress and, and get ahead as well and trying to beat your mates. So I think that would be really cool. Um, but again, that's only if uh, the restrictions um, uh, are released uh, sooner rather than later. And again, that'll be a pretty well last minute thing. So stay tuned for that. We'll have some information on the website ready to go for that too. So if uh, if um, if the government restrictions are released, it's just we can just press the button get down there and descend on Linga Longa Bike Park and uh, stress Boxer out and have a have a blast down there on Boxer's Blast. Thanks Penelope, hope you're going well out there. I think Penny is actually one of our essential workers, so thanks for your work, Penny, as well. Const Constellation Prize, Adam. Um, <laughs> oh, I think that's replying to Renee there. But if, uh, yeah, if, Keep the comments coming through, guys, as well. Feel free to send me an email, uh, steve at wagravityenduro.org. Um, feel free to post away on the Facebook pages there and uh, support any of the mountain biking uh, communities best you can. I know some of the bike shops have been really busy lately, which is great to see. Uh, I believe internationally there's been a big increase in uh, cycling uh, just not just as a mode of transportation, but for fitness as well. So that's very exciting to see. I think it's like a 15% increase in sales in the UK. So, and I believe some of our local bike shops are very, very busy as well. So please make sure you go out there and keep supporting them. Uh, it'll keep uh, the mountain bike industry ticking along. And um, so when we do get things going again, uh, it's going to be you know we can go straight back into there, back into racing, full steam ahead, uh, like nothing's ever happened. So fingers crossed uh, that will all go ahead. But anyway, I think that's enough from me, guys. Um, stay safe out there. Fingers crossed that the COVID uh, restrictions will be lift, lifted very soon. But again, if you have any um, comments or questions, 
feel free to fire them through and uh, very shortly I'll upload that calendar to our Facebook header page so it's all there uh, ready to see. All right guys, stay safe, take care out there. I'm gonna try and shut this broadcast down without making a fool of myself and uh, <laughs> take it easy guys. All right, bye-bye.